In this video, we're going to add coins in our game. So head on to the Quantum Browser over here. Then over here, right click, select Blueprint Actor Class for our coin. So I'm going to call this Coin BP. Open this up. Over in the Add category, I'm going to click on this and then type Static Mesh. Call this Coin. And then over in the Details panel, we have this Static Mesh over here. I'm going to click on this drop down icon and then select cylinder. So I'm just going to reduce the scale of this and make this more like a coin. So just like this, we have a coin like static mesh over here. And then again, under the details panel, in materials, I'm going to add a gold material over here so that it looks more like a coin. So just compile this and go back to the Quantum browser and then open our ground title. And over here, the way we're going to implement our coin system is if the wall door is selected, then we'll have the coins go over to this section over here, right through this area. We don't want the coins to spawn over in the edges of the static mesh. So, similarly, in our obstacle laser, we want our coins to be spawned above the obstacle over here because our player cannot pass through this. So in these circumstances, we want to manually adjust how our coins appear. And to do that, we're going to use the arrow component to act as our spawn points for our coins. So that we can kind of manually give a specific position for which our coins could be spawned at. And we can also control the randomness of the spawning of those coins to give more variations to our gameplay. So again, this I'm only going to use the ground tile to implement this. But this should work with any other tile that you choose to use. So what I'm going to do is click on the add button over here and then type arrow and I'm going to call this coin spawn points. And in here, I'm just going to use this as a parent just for the sake of organizing our spawn points because we, we're going to have multiple spawn points for two different obstacles. And for that reason, we're going to have a lot of spawn points and it's going to be very difficult to track which spawn point belongs to which. So hence, I'm going to use these little things to organize them. So I'm going to disable these two things. We don't want visibility or the tick on this one. And then while this is selected, click on add and type arrow. And I'm going to call this coin spawn point one. This is going to be our first coin spawn points. So it is going to be for this mesh over here. We want the spawn points to pass through these three. So I'm going to click on this again. Make sure that its visibility is set to false and tick is also set to false. And then from here, I'm going to click on add again and then type arrow. And I'm going to leave it as arrow one. And I'm going to select on arrow one of the coin SP1. Move this by about 100 so that when the coin is spawned, it is more visible for the player and then I'm going to move this over here. After you have arranged the arrow, the arrow that we have created over here, I'm going to duplicate and then arrange the position for our next spawn point. I'm going to create about four of these and yeah, just keep repeating this. And now we have about four of these arrows under coin SP1. And this coin SP1 is mainly meant for this obstacle over here, that is the obstacle Waldo. Now we have another obstacle, that is the obstacle laser. In the case of the obstacle laser, we can't use these spawn points because our player is not going to be able to collect the coins because of this obstacle over here. Hence, we need to modify the positions of the spawn point. And so I'm going to create a new collection of spawn points. So I'm going to click on arrow again. I'm going to create a new arrow for this coin SP2. And then under here, I'm going to create a new arrow. Leave it as arrow 5. And under coin SP2, make sure that the tick and the visibility is set to false. Then back to arrow 5. We want to adjust the positions of this. So I'm going to go over here to 200 and then duplicate it again. And then you just give it a position, just however, however you want to adjust the position of it. So for the second angle spawn point, I'm going to keep it a bit higher. 
so that when our player jumps, our player can collect the coin more easily. Just like that. Alright, so now that we have done that, I'm going to go to the event graph and in, in here under coin sp1 i'm going to drag these four over here so just drag all the four arrows down over here drag from the arrow and type get relative transform i'm just going to copy this and paste this all over here so create three of these and after you have added the get relative transform function to all four of these arrows over here i'm going to drag over here I'm going to type make array and then click on the add pin over here click on it three times and then connect each of these pin to the array over here so after you have done that drag from the array and then type for each loop and then again drag from the array and type git and select the git copy because we only need a copy of this array we don't need to modify it Hence we chose the copy and then drag the array index over here. After you're done with that, we're going to drag from the get over here and then type add child actor component. Connect the loop body to the execution pin of this function over here and then connect the execution pin of set component tick enabled to the for each loop. So that is done for that particular mesh. So again, this is meant for wall door. So if you're using the wall door obstacle, we will use the coin sp1 instead. And coin sp1 refers to the, the four arrows over here. So the next one is meant to be for our the obstacle laser over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect the connection over here, then drag this down over here, drag this out and type sequence. And we're going to connect this to the timeline execution pin and then i'm going to just i'm going to just copy these nodes over here except the arrow components the arrow references over here and then i'm going to paste this we want to use the arrow references for the coin sp2 which contains the arrow spawn points meant for our obstacle laser instead of using the ones for the obstacle wall door and the reason why we split the execution pin using a sequence node is because we can't connect this from the add local offset directly to the for each loop. The reason for that is because we're using a timeline node over here. So the timeline node, node will basically execute whatever nodes are connected through the update execution pin over here. And we don't want to call this function over here all these nodes multiple times. We only really want this to be called whenever this ground tile is generated. So hence we used a sequence node to separately execute these nodes meant for adding the coins. And then from here, I'm going to drag these arrows over here from the coin sp2, which represent the spawn point for our obstacle laser. Connect them all to the target of get relative transform functions we forgot to disable the obstacle laser over here so i'm just going to disable set the visibility of this to false in the child actor component go over to the details panel and under child actor component click on this drop down icon and then type the coin that we have created so coin bp select it and do the same thing for the child actor component over here select the coin bp compile this and automatically the, the actor class coin bp will be showing up over here after you compile it then run the game and all right the coin is now blocking our way again we can easily fix this by going over to the coin bp and then setting the collision to no collision and we can also add another thing known as rotating movement component over here this should give some movement to our coin over here so it will rotate like this so just make sure to compile it and then run the game and now you can see our coin have all properly spawned 
and everything is being worked properly. With this method you can actually control where you want the coins to be spawned. So yeah this method works with any other obstacles. And if we want we can add more randomness by choosing to have some obstacles to have no coins and some parts of the obstacle to have coins. And the way we are going to do this is by copying this code over here. This will create some more variation to our gameplay. So I paste the code over here and connect it to the for each loop. I'm going to remove this execution pin and give this a value of 1. So this way our random integer in range will produce a value of 0 and 1. And if the value is 0, it will execute this section of the code over here. And if the value is 1, it will not execute this code over here. And that means it will not generate any of the coins into obstacle. So we can do the same thing over here. I'm going to copy this. I can just paste this over here. And then connect it over to the for each loop. This should create some more randomness to our gameplay. So run this. And yeah, that's it for this tutorial. In the next part of this tutorial series, I'm going to show how to create the current number of coins so that it's easier for you to see how much coins you have collected over the time throughout this game. Also, we hadn't added any of the logic to collect the coins. So I'm going to do that all in the next part of this tutorial series. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye.